Well, Colleen, it's so great to have you joining me on the Nothing Is Wasted podcast. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's an honor and a gift. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm I'm really excited to hear about your journey. I you know I know that um, even just not knowing a whole lot, but just having a little bit of interaction with you right now before we went on air, I can just sense the Lord all over you, and I know He's been mm-hmm. all in your journey. And so I'm excited for yeah. our listeners and for for myself to hear where He's shown up in 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 your pain mm-hmm. story. Why don't you before you dive into your story? Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, mm-hmm. where you're from, what your family's like? Just give us a little you know, modern day context, and then we'll dive back into your story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, I'm married to an amazing man named Eddie. Mm. I got married at 34 years old and then within a year had this beautiful baby boy, mm. um, Jeremy, his name means the Lord lifts up and sets free. Oh, and wow. I just love that. And he's a gift. He's a miracle, miracle baby. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's, we're living in Idaho right now after okay our entire lives in California. (laughs) So we've been here a year and it's, um, it's been an adjustment and a blessing and putting down new roots, missing our old roots and, um, but good people up here that we, we've enjoyed connecting with. And I, um, my side gig is editing and writing. Okay. Um, but I get to be really engaged at home and with my son and with our current journey. Um, I, it's been good because um, I can do that very minimally mm. when I have energy and health for that. Yeah. Um, dealing with some, I don't know how much you want me to yeah, share right now ahead. about, yeah, yeah, just, ahead, just yeah. So living through um, a terminal diagnosis right now mm. and just, um, so that's shifted a lot of our norm. Yeah. <laughs> Normal looks different right now, yeah. but we, um, yeah, we're just seeing God all over, all over the place and mm. just grateful for being where we are and seeing wow. him move. And yeah, wow. I feel, yep. Wow. I feel Man. very privileged by, by where we're at right now, but also there's a lot to share here. <laughs> there's a lot to so, share because even as yeah. you're saying that those two things mm-hmm. in the same sentence, you're saying that mm-hmm. you are living with a terminal diagnosis mm-hmm. and yet you're also saying that there's, you know, I'm hearing from you. There's so much joy in life and mm-hmm. experiencing God and all of that. And and I'll be honest with you, most of us who are listening to this, we can't reconcile those two. We're like, wait a minute, how yeah. in the world yeah. <laughs> can you say that? How can those two things, both of them come out of your mouth at the same time, you know? Yeah. And so... Yeah. Well, sometimes they don't, <laughs> yeah. you know, depending upon the moment. Sometimes I can't say both in the same breath. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, why don't yeah. you why don't you kind of back us up and give us a little bit of context mm-hmm. and you know when when did this come about you know how's this um, when, when did everything begin that started you down this road? Mm. Well, I I was a little girl with big dreams. Yeah. <laughs> I've always related a lot with Joseph in the Bible, just mm. a dreamer, big big yeah. dreamer, and um, and I think some of those dreams um, were put in my heart by God. They were from him, but they were full of me, you know, as yeah, a, yeah. as a young girl, as a teenage girl. Um, and so it took kind of being blindsided by depression for the first time when I was 19. Um, and, you know, I, I tell people all the time I had, I had the world on a string, yeah. I, not that my childhood was super easy, but it, I just, I was a big dreamer and I, I'd yeah. been given a lot, you know, yeah. I, I'd been given um, a lot as a kid and just thought that I was a pretty awesome gift to people. (laughs) So depression hit and that began a journey, um, of a couple decades Mm. with, um, cycles of deep depression, dark, dark depression. And then it wouldn't be sustained, but it would come and go and, and then anxiety and panic attacks. Mm. And then, um, as I moved into my 20s, all of my friends were getting married young, like right. um, 21, 22, 23. Right, yeah. And I hit 25 and I'm like, what's going on? This isn't what everybody else's experience yeah. is. And I didn't know what to make of that at that point. And I, I talked to God a lot about it. And I think at that point, between depression and the singleness, um, I was starting to understand that life wasn't going to look like I had anticipated. Mm. It was, you know, the... I was on the cusp of some really 
new realities about God that I had no idea of. I, yeah. I had him in a, a really beautiful little box yeah. package tied up, right? Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't working out the way I thought it should. And so it it's almost like this beautiful dialogue began between God and me. And then 30 hit and I was still single, mm. <laughs> still experiencing bouts of depression. And I had these weird physical symptoms start to explode into some chronic pain and illness. Oh, wow. Um and I just could not reconcile what was going on with my life. Yeah, <laughs> but in the middle of that, there was so much, um, there were so many gifts in singleness. There were so many joys. I, I got to do things that are just, I still look back and smile like, God, you wow. were just giving me so much during that time. So much ministry, so many fruitful friendships mm. and discipleship, mentorship. Um, so it wasn't. It wasn't a bad time. It yeah. was just so differently. It was working out so differently than I yeah. thought. So um, anyway, in my early 30s, I wrestled deep. I was struggling hard. And yet I was understanding, too, that um, I was experiencing God's realness and love in a way that a lot of my friends were looking at me and say, saying, I don't experience him like that, mm. you know, and their lives had kind of unfolded in a typical way. Yeah. And here I was not able to figure out where I fit in a world full of couple, like my circles were all married with kids. Right. Um, I didn't fit, but I was experiencing God and yeah. I was finding him to be who he was saying he was in scripture. Mm. Um, it was, it was almost like mm. his reality was clear to me because the things that I was clinging to were being stripped away, right? right? right. And then um, met my amazing husband and got married. And immediately my health just started. I got pregnant right away, which is such a miracle. I mean, some of my friends who have struggled yeah. with infertility, I can't even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel spoiled that we got pregnant so quickly and we would not be able to again. Um, but in that time, my health, it just it, it unraveled. And then I... I had this beautiful little baby boy who had massive health issues. Mm. And so at that point, I remember writing like, God, here are the things I've prayed for we were in asked for. And now I feel like I can't even enjoy them mm. because of all these crazy things that continue to unfold. Um, but again, he was taking me deeper. And then wow. we had, um, when Jeremy was six, he's <clears throat> almost 11 now in a few weeks. When he was wow. six, we had um, a summer where there were like five or six weeks of health, both him and me. Okay. And Eddie, my husband and I looked at each other and we were like, maybe we're out of the woods. Maybe this is like, maybe we've kind of earned some relief. I don't think yeah. we would never say it that way, but. But that's what you were, that's, yeah. That's what we, right. And at yeah. least hoping we, like, okay, we've. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's so funny. We were just, fear. we were just, my co-host and I were talking about this as we were kind of recording yeah. intros and outros that sometimes we kind of feel like that suffering it can be this like, okay, there, it, there's this thing that I'm doing as almost penance or earning or like, you know, like, uh, I, it, it is, as soon as I get to a certain point where I've passed the test of suffering, then it's like, yep. okay, we're done. We've got to that destination. Yep. Now we've, <laughs> we've arrived to where we need to be in terms of our relationship with God. I get it now. Okay. Now I can enjoy life. I got this. Now. Totally. Wow. Totally. Mm. Yes. And I think that was my mindset at that point. And I was just sharing recently, um, with someone that my, my whole mindset has shifted now I don't look at it like, okay, I want to learn this lesson so we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. what are you teaching me? Because yeah. let's check this off the list and get to yeah. something better. And now it's a totally different perspective. Like, how am I going to experience more of Jesus in this? Yeah. What is he doing? What's he up to? Yeah. How is he using this for his big, you know, glorious, amazing story? <sighs> it's a it's a very different perspective I have. And wow. because, um, because after that... Um, little window of health, I found a little lump um, oh. and found out I had cancer. So we went through that journey, got the all clear. Um, and then last year um, found out it was back. And this time it was stage four terminal. Oh, man. And so it's that shift in my mentality. There's not yeah. an end to this one where I get to fight through and say, yes, you know, cancer free. I'm a warrior. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know, it's, it doesn't end like that. 
And so this whole perspective change has been a really beautiful thing. And looking back over my shoulder at a couple of decades of going, oh my goodness, I actually see God's hand in all this. Yeah. I see I see a lot of beauty in this, but True. man, it takes some ugly dark days to get to that, right? Like you get this where wow. we we fight hard to find the beauty or wow. to experience Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah, man, Colleen, there's so much that you've said that, you know, it's, it just, it, it sits heavy on me and, uh, mm. and, and I want to unpack so many different things, but I'm, I'm just like, I, I just, I'll be as transparent and probably fumble through this as, as <laughs> I, I don't like to fumble through the things like this because <laughs> I like to have gathered, collected thoughts. And, and right now what you've shared with me, it doesn't allow me to gather or collect my mm. thoughts because I just can't help but know that I'm, I'm talking with somebody right now who you're, you're, Death is a very real thing on the horizon yeah. for you, yes. barring some kind of amazing, unbelievable miracle yeah. here on earth, right? Totally. But, mm -hmm. but you're, you have this perspective that on one hand, on some level, all of us probably should have because we, have, no, we mm -hmm. have no idea when we're going to step into eternity. But, yeah. you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm really, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I get to have this conversation with you. And here's why, because mm -hmm. most of the time we're having conversations with folks who have lost somebody. All right. And so we're yeah. kind of gleaning insight from their experience of, mm. I don't know if I've had a conversation with someone who is going, Hey, I'm facing this and mm. um, it's probably going to be soon. I'm going to be with Jesus. Mm. And now I'm looking back yeah. on life and I'm looking at what God is doing and all of this. And I want to share with you mm. how I see things. And I wish I could, you know, have a moment where I get like a portal into heaven and go sit down with my late wife and say, okay, now that you've experienced like, what, what do you think about yes. life and what do you think about these things? And we get mm. a moment right now where we get to talk to you about yeah. this. Mm. And so I, a few, you know, a few things that come up, um, through that lens, through that lens of, of going, Hey, you know, et eternity is very real and mm. life is very short. Um, yeah. And there's there's a, a very real finality that we're going to experience. You 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 gave us kind of a you gave us context for your journey in that there were things you desired, mm. things that you hoped for, dreams that you have, yes. and you weren't realizing those things. Other people mm. around you were experiencing life as normal, quote unquote, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The American dream. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. how yeah. they had it mapped out and planned out. <laughs> yeah. And you're going, well, I'm seeing that it's not happening this way for me. And yeah. yet I'm experiencing this richness with the yes. Lord. Yes. And yet it was not enjoyable. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. All the things. Yes. And yet the there above. was joy <laughs> in it. Right. So it's like, right. can you kind of unpack that for me a little bit? Because uh, I, that's, hmm. there's so much, it's, it's profound right there. It's profound. Mm. I mean, you even said that like what you were clinging to or what we all have a tendency to yeah. cling to were being stripped away from you almost, it yes. seems like strategically by the Lord so that you could yes. experience this. Totally. So, so mm -hmm. I kind of unpack like how in the world do you walk through not experiencing what you hope for and dream mm. you're disappointed perpetually by God. Mm -hmm. And yet you're saying, ah, but it's, on some level, it feels worth it. Yes, beautifully. You're saying it so beautifully. Yes. Yeah, I think there, there's so much, right? I'm going to fumble through. <laughs> like you said, you feel that's because we're dealing with mystery. We're dealing with um, stuff on the other side yeah. of reality in eternal realms that does not make sense in our finite understanding. Mm. We're So we're dealing with big, big stuff, right? And we can only grasp a little of it. Um, so hmm. uh, the, the thing that comes to mind is um, that it's a one day at a time experience. And hmm. if I had been shown, <laughs> yeah. you know, at 19, like, oh, this is just the beginning, yeah. you know, like for the next two decades, I, I would have never gotten out of bed or 
or done something more drastic, yeah. to be honest. Like, I could not have handled seeing the big picture. And yet, the flip side of that is, had I been able to see what that would, fr- how how the suffering would free me, how it would make me live more out of the heart Jesus has given me, how I Wow. I would have pressed through with better perspective. So it's just, it's always this mix. It's always this mystery. But I think um, those days of just being raw and real with God, there were times I screamed. If my roommates were gone, I, I screamed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I knew that God could take it. That's what he was proving to me was mm. that he could take it. He, not everyone can... No one's designed to take our full no. raw reel, no. right? Like right. it's too much. It it's is. too much yeah. for another human. But I was learning wow. um, to go to him over and over and over. And so that habit, that pressing, and I would not have gone to him yeah. had my life gone according to my plan. So it was this sense of going to him and going to him and going to him and not going to him all pretty and not going to him. Right having the right words. Sometimes I didn't have the right words. So I was wailing. I was in the fetal position in my closet, you know, um, some ugly, ugly stuff that God could handle. And I think that binds us to him, gives us an attachment to him that we can't get any other way. And so there was this, he was so real to me because I would go to him like that and then I would leave changed, not leave him, right. but I would be able to get up off the floor of my closet. I yeah, would stop screaming I, you know? yeah. and he had shown up yeah. and he'd said something from his word to my heart mm. and it changed in that moment. It changed my heart. It changed my brain wow. and it helped me to step another step forward. Wow. And see his goodness. So, I mean, I could go on and on, but that that's an initial thought yeah. for some of how this is unfolded. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> you, so I'm assuming that prior to age 19, you had some kind of a foundation for, you know, a walk with Jesus and mm. God's word. And because you just said, you know, yeah. in those moments as you're like crying out to God. Yes. He, something would come up, you know, God's word. He would, he would breathe that into you. Something would yes. come to your recall. And it yep. would, it would change that synapses yeah. that was happening, that, that neural yep. pathway. And, yep. <laughs> you know, which is amazing because this is right. Romans 12, one and yeah. two, do not conform yes. any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I love that. Totally. Paul was a neuroscientist and he didn't realize that he was a yes, neuroscientist. Yes, he was, he was. But, <laughs> but it is like God's word does that. It re, and, and more importantly, yeah. the experience of God, the emotional experience of God yes. right there in your closet as you're crying out to him, that yeah. coupled with the power of the word of God is what really yes. rewires those things so we can see yeah. from a different perspective. And yeah. so can, what, you know, I would say how, what was your foundation like mm. prior to 19 i know aside mm. from life being really you know you had the world on this, on a string and life yeah, seemed yeah. good yeah. what was that and and coupled with that how necessary would you say that part of your journey was for foundation mm. for the next part of your journey that's a really good question um i had the privilege of growing up in a home that loved jesus my dad was a pastor and so i got a lot of good train, you know, just training without right. even it being official training. Right. I just, I saw how he went into the word and taught the word and how my parents lived, mm. um, a, a real faith. It was real yeah. at home yeah. as well as at church. Wow. Um, but I was a very, um, difficult child. Yeah. <laughs> my, my parents had yeah. six kids and I was the first and I'm like, I don't know why you had five more because I, I gave them a run for their money. Um, <laughs> and just did crazy things at a young age. So I understood my need for a savior. That was mm-hmm. obvious, um, at a very young age, but it wasn't until 11, I had, um, I, de- I developed an ulcer from my anxiety, from guilt over stuff like I, Huh. Just crazy. Um, and at that age, God just gave me this longing for him to be Lord of my life, not just mm. Savior, but to have his way in my life. And my heart caught fire for the word. And so at yeah. age 11, through my teens, it was kind of flip-flop for me. My my 
difficult years were the younger years. My <laughs> teenage years were like growth and oh, you know digging you're, deep. You're providing that. hope for me because I have a nine year old. <laughs> And an, and an almost eight-year-old. And it okay. feels really difficult. I also have a two-and-a-half-year-old. It feels very there difficult at this there. stage. So maybe, because we keep yeah, saying, maybe. oh, if it's this bad, then teenage years is right, going right, to be, right. oh. so maybe. <laughs> maybe Thank you. Be That's just simple, simple little nuggets of hope right there, Colleen. Right, Thank you. right. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, teenagers were really, really um, significant in my yeah. growth with the Lord. And I was lonely a lot because a lot of my peers were not, um, in that space, um, mm. or definitely not believers. Um, so that foundation, little did I know that God was mm. preparing me, you yeah. know, and building stuff in my heart and my mind. Now I say that, and I was totally full of myself and self-righteous and probably really difficult to be around <laughs> wow. Wow. because yeah. I, I knew a lot, right? Yeah. Like I was, I was getting, um, all this good, good information. And I, yes, I was experiencing God, but it was more um, good works, and mm, I wanted yeah. to measure up. I was a you know firstborn pastor's kid. I wanted to please everyone. Me right? too. So, I get it. Me too. Oh, there you go. Firstborn <laughs> pastor's kid. There's a whole other like special kind of special. They need to. There needs a whole other line of counseling for those of right. us who are firstborn. I totally agree. We need like a totally camp agree. all to ourselves. <laughs> high intensive therapy. Intensive therapy. <laughs> It's so true. A special kind of <laughs> mess up. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so I, um, I'm grateful for that time, but I also see how much I was, uh, yeah, just, you know, full of my own good works and what I could do for God. Right. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. So, so there was, there were certainly some really valuable things that came out of yes, that, that have, yes. you know, that have bled into and been, you know, really helpful for how you've yeah. been experiencing life right now. Absolutely. And God's been faithful to burn away mm-hmm. some yeah. of the, you know, the legalism or the self-righteousness, yes. or the, you know, yep. through and, and often pain and suffering does that for us. Right. Totally. Um, totally. Would yeah. you, when, when you're looking at that and you're going, okay, <clears throat> cause a lot of times what can creep into people's minds is like, well, is this, was this something that was necessary then for me to walk through this pain and suffering in order to be yeah. refined and sanctified into more of the image of Christ? I mean, God, you could have, I, we, listen, we could have sat down and we could have done this a different way. You know, I, I would have right. gotten my act together if you had just taught me this, like somehow yep. in a lecture or something, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you think this was like, necessary that you went, or do you think this was, I mean, how would, how do you reconcile that? Because that's, Mm. that's a tough wrestling for all, for all of us. And each one of our pain points of going like, wait, did God do this or did he allow this or was this necessary for, or what, you know, how do you, how do you reconcile with that? Yeah. And I think I, it's funny. I think over time I've been able to justify like a certain amount of suffering. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh, this makes sense. I see that God wants to make me more like him. Mm-hmm. And then there's a threshold where you go, whoa, way too much. We paid, we passed way too much yeah. long ago, yeah. right? Like, right. you know this, you've, right. you've been there. Um, and I think that's when it's been insanely painful. And I have um, wrestled so hard with God and been angry mm-hmm. with him. And Um, again, that raw, unfiltered, unedited version of me with God. And what, again, he's so faithful in those times to speak. Like he is, he engages, he's there, he's near, and he breaks through. Um, And I've become really convinced of what the Apostle Paul said, um, that my my deepest desire is to know Christ and the fellowship of his sufferings. Mm. And that's, that's how we know him. We suffer like that is so clear in the new Testament and we hate that. (laughs) It does not not fit into our Western American construct for Christianity. That's for sure. Wow. No, but I think that is truly, if we were serious about knowing that that's the ultimate treasure the ultimate satisfaction and fulfillment, that that's the bigger dream. 
um, all of these other dreams are lesser substitute, um, mm. shabby, anemic dreams. But if we regarded wow. that to know Christ is the big, big dream, then suffering is put in its place as a gift. Uh, it, it doesn't make it easy. It doesn't take the sting and the awfulness out of it, but it it gives us the perspective to kind of wrap our arms around it, even as we might fight it. Wow. Again, back to mystery, wow. right? Um, and that's become more and more of a reality for me is thinking like this is this is the best thing that could happen to me is to know more of Christ and go, like C.S. Lewis said in the last battle, further up and further in. <sighs> that is treasure. That's that's the real deal. But that's easy to say. <laughs> yeah. On the daily, that can be hard to live and embrace. Absolutely. Absolutely. What does that look like on the daily then? You know, because mm -hmm. we're sitting here with headphones and a microphone and it's really, mm -hmm. you know... And, and no doubt in your story and my story, God's brought some really profound insights into mm. who, who he is and, and yeah. a new perspective on life because of our suffering. And we mm. can articulate those things. But, you know, practically, if someone's listening to this and they're going, okay, I'm struggling. I get that cognitively. I can, I can mm. hear you say that, Colleen, but I'm struggling mm. with applying that on the daily. Mm. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Wh what yeah. is that? What does that look like? How do you apply it every day? Because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, every day you're waking up with this reality, this very present reality of like, yeah, wow, okay. Yeah. You know, and yeah. now I've got to apply this again. Yes. I've got to, okay, this is how I have to see this. So how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. And that's so true. It is um, a daily, uh, I've recently told my best friends, it feels like, um, rubbing up against normal is really painful right now because mm. this reality is an hourly present reality. I don't, I never forget that this is what's happening. Yeah. You know, that my body is in the process of dying. That's, it doesn't escape um, my thoughts. Um, and so what I've been so grateful for over time, God's so faithful. He's just, he equips us mm for what he's going to carry us through. And even when we're in the midst of going through something we do not feel equipped for at all, he, he's giving us what we need. You know, it's, it's mm. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. And so some of the things he's given me along the way um, are super practical handles. Mm. And one of them is I choose gratitude and I thank God wow. as much as I can. And I, it, sometimes it's, oh, God, thank you for this hot black cup of decaf coffee. Mm. I, and just like being able to find something really small or mm. look at that beautiful bird right outside my window and to listen to the song and just thank God for something simple. Sometimes I can thank him for something bigger, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. but sometimes that's all I can kind of muster. But that act of thanksgiving and this is a, a common thing we hear here even in yeah. the secular world right is thanksgiving yeah. is transformative but i think as believers it's a unique kind of gratitude mm. that helps us tap into the awareness of god's nearness and mm. that wow if he gave me this and he gave me this other gift and this other little good thing yeah. um, it kind of tunes our hearts to the fact that maybe he is a good God after all in wow. the moment where we're feeling like are you bad wow. like are you mean are you but to say okay I'm gonna stop and just thank you God for this little thing for wow. the fact I just got to hug my son again um, I just got to look my husband in the eyes again yeah. and give him a huge hug, right? And you know this stuff. You yeah. know this stuff. Absolutely. You, um, wow. And sure. other different handles along the way of, um, you know, staying connected with my people and being honest and um, not isolating wow. and still reaching out with two people that might not understand what this is like, yeah. um, but choosing a few life-giving, really healthy people that will remind me of who I am and um, who are for me and who are going to be with me to the end. Um, that can't be a big crowd right now, yeah. but it's a few really yeah. precious people who have been around for decades. Um, and I could go on and on with little, you know, <sighs> handles Man. like 
remembering a, a, a time where God was really good and just dwelling on that memory and replaying it and um, wow. remembering what it, it felt like and smelled like and just putting myself back in a place where, oh, that was such a good gift back then. And God, you're the same now as you were back then. And so maybe today is nothing like that good moment, but I can remember that you were good and what it felt like to be at peace and to not be fearful or angry or any yeah, of that stuff. Yeah. So anyway, it's handles that God's given. He's so faithful right. um, Wow. to not leave us stranded. Colleen, what I'm hearing you say is that your spirit is practicing for heaven. Oh, I love that. Because I, I feel I like, I mean, that. even as, as we were talking, yes. as you're saying those things, I'm going... I feel like heaven is a place where we will never take for granted any of the small mm, things of so the little true. blessings. It's like our senses will be so wow. acutely attuned to all the little tiny pleasures that God yes. has brought around us that it just they're firing wow. all the time with this gratitude and this worship and this awe yeah. and this wonder. And it's like... Mm. You know, here on this wow. side of eternity, we're so weighed down by the presence of sin, the curse of sin, totally. the presence of suffering, this like yep. we see dimly, but, you know, it's it's like, man, I just. And so yep. those things, you know, everything that so easily entangles us, as scripture tells us, those yes. things tend to cause us to get distracted or sidetracked yes. or weighed down or, or, and we take for granted the little small moments yeah. and indicators of God's faithfulness. And you're wow. telling me right now, as you're uh, intentionally tuning into those things, it's causing mm. this peace yeah. to surface. Yeah. And I love how you put things. Yes. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Hey, everybody who's listening to this, listen to this right now. Right? Like, mm. Yeah. This is the practice. I'm challenged by this, Colleen, because this mm. is the practice that every single one of us should be doing on a daily basis. Mm. And well, I'm challenged by it to say it because I better keep living it. <laughs> wow. Right? Like I don't get let off the hook. I got to keep right. keep out this. So it's it's a good it's a good word back to myself. Whew. Wow. That's so I love how you so said good. that practice for how would you say that practice Our for heaven? Our spirit is practicing for heaven. Yeah. Whew. That's that is good. Well, and yes. I wonder, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit, but my wife and I were having this conversation that like, um, you know, the more that we see the presence of evil in this world, mm. and, and I, I don't know if evil is more present in this world or we're just waking up to it more mm. because as you get older, you kind of, you know, some of that childlike <laughs> <laughs> naivety subsides yeah. and fades away yeah. and you get, you experience more things and you're like, so now you're not surprised sure. by things as much as you used to be. So because yes. you're like, okay. And so regardless, however that wow. is, we're hmm. encountering and learning of more and more evil in this world and more and more yeah. hurt and more and more suffering yes. and more and more that you can almost see how that readies your spirit for heaven. Mm, yes. Right. And I wonder yes. if that would be true to your experience too, where like you kind of get to a place where you go, I'm ready for, yeah. because this, this world right here is not my home. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the freedom too, in that you're exactly right. Is that it's, it's harder to get embroiled in this stuff right now because mm -hmm. it is passing so quickly. Wow. And I don't mean to negate the severity of some of this awful stuff Certainly. that's going on. Not at all. It's quite, it, it's actually the opposite because I think I feel because of suffering, I feel more deeply with people who suffer than yeah, ever before right, over right. the years. Right. It, 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 it attunes us to people's suffering. So in one sense, my mercy and compassion is bigger than ever. In another sense, some of the stuff that just seems crazy, you know, like yeah. Yeah. the hatred and the anger and everyone having, you know, these huge opinions about things just seems crazy. Yeah. You know, at this stage of things, it's like that stuff doesn't matter. Let's, let's go where people are suffering and don't have the hope of Jesus. Mm. And so I think it's, um, yeah, it really is a beautiful perspective in the midst of a world that feels like it's just hemorrhaging left yeah. and right. Like, <sighs> but to, to think about the fact, um, that, I think as we believers suffer, we, we are shining this. It's such, it sounds cliche, but I feel the reality of it so much. It is a light in the darkness mm. to watch believers suffer with hope. Yep. Yep. And I think when we're sitting pretty and we're living the American dream, 
why would the world even bother with us? Yep. Why would they even listen to us? Yep. <laughs> because we've got everything they have plus Jesus, yeah. right? Like, okay, big deal. But when we see people, I've been transformed by those who yeah. have suffered and shown me what it means to experience Jesus yeah. and find his love in a deeper way and and pour out their lives for others, even while they suffer. Yeah. Like that stuff is it's amazing. So it's, it's motivating to, um, to live this well. I mean, and when I say yeah. well, it's messy and it's not, yeah, it doesn't absolutely. always look great, but, right, right. but to keep, keep close to Jesus yeah. because he's, he, he wants the light to burn brighter in this darkness yeah. than ever before. That's so good. I, one of the books I read after my late wife was killed, I'd was uh, it was so profound and, and so powerful mm. and impactful. It was um, John Piper filling up the afflictions of Christ. Ooh, <laughs> and, I've not read that one, but <clears throat> Piper's amazing. Well, the first half of it was him dissecting that statement from I think I believe Colossians, right, where it says wow, that we fill yep. up we yes. as his body fill up the afflictions of Christ, and yes. then the second half of it is all of these stories of missionaries and people who are on like the front lines mm. of ministry who had experienced intense, awful suffering and tragedy. And, yeah. you know, and so yeah. his whole point was, um, how do you, how do we fill up the afflictions of Christ? Doesn't it seem like it's full, right? Mm. Jesus on the cross right, right. doesn't <laughs> seem like you can do it. How do we add to that? How do we, right, right. um, but he was saying that, mm. you know, here in, in 2022, nobody has mm. actually physically seen Jesus on the cross, mm. right? We, we've not, we yes. didn't witness that. So we didn't yep. witness his suffering. We didn't watch yes. him walk the road with the cross on his back and oh. choose, right, for the joy set before yes. him to endure the cross. We didn't watch that. We can hear about it. We can be like, wow, it's so profound, even just Whoa. in the spiritual experience of embracing that, sure. and receiving the sure. forgiveness, of course, but we didn't see it. And the only yep. way that non-believers, that the world witnesses the suffering of Christ is the suffering of his body, mm -hmm. believers. Wow. And when they walk with that same focus yep. for the joy set before them, they wow. endure the cross. And that is what awakens people to the the passion of Christ, right? That's and I was like, good. yes. That's but it's exactly incredible. what you're saying. It's that's exactly incredible. what you're saying. Yes. Yes. You know, that that the world is wow. is not impressed by <laughs> a Christian who is Everything is up and to the right. They're like in awe right. of the ones like, how do you stand yes. with what you're going through? Yes. And it's like uh, only Christ, only Jesus. Totally. And the conversations with my, my precious friends and family who are not believers, it's like dynamite conversation. It's Oh, I can imagine. It, it, right? I mean, like, this, this feels like such a sacred conversation, Colleen. I can't imagine all the conversations you have. They all are probably like, it's, oh my gosh, like. Oh, you're so sweet. I don't know about that. It's just, it's so living. It's so real. It's not, it doesn't feel cliche or forced. It's just, mm. it's beautiful. It's beautiful what God is doing. And he can only do that, right? When he, he, he crushes us. Wow. I, I mean, honestly, it's wow. beauty from ashes. That's how he, that's how he does it. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be big things. I'm really quick to tell people this too. It doesn't have to be yeah. cancer or a terminal yeah. diagnosis, or it can be other stuff that just wears over time, you know? And I feel like that's what singleness was for me. Yeah. That was excruciating over time mm -hmm. to not have what everyone else had. It just wore me to the bones sometimes. And, and yet that's mm -hmm. what was freeing me. And that's what, so I, I do like to make that qualification because I think some people will feel left out like, oh, I'm, I don't have this huge suffering, mm. but it's, it's, it can be a daily thing that's, right. yeah. that's um, wearisome or hard yeah. and everyone has their own hard, their own unique ways of, of being broken. Yeah. Right. 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 Mental illness or, I mean, it, the list could go Absolutely. on. And on so. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, so I'm curious about a couple of things, um, and I'd love to hear your insight on this. You know, there, are, uh, I've definitely, I mean, just recently have walked with uh, someone in a congregation that I'm a teaching pastor at who 
Mm. Um, had essentially a, a, a terminal diagnosis, which was fighting really hard, and 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 then wow. she passed away. And we were mm. um, brazenly like praying fervently for mm. healing, right? Yeah. And and yeah. and I know that this yeah. is the conversation in in so many circles, right? Is yes. How do we reconcile a God who we know can heal, mm-hmm. we know can totally. raise from the dead, we know can, okay, yep. and, 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 and yet he doesn't in some situations, and he yep. does in some situations. Yes. So I'm sure you've wrestled through those thoughts. I'm sure Absolutely. you've prayed really big, bold prayers. I'm sure, right? Yep. Yep. And, and I, my, I, my, I'm curious where you land mm-hmm. with all of that stuff, mm-hmm. Yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. there is this ever-present reality, and then there's also this other mm-hmm. reality that... Yeah. that touches our reality, this like, yes, this supernatural that intervenes and interjects often in our, yes. in our earthly reality. So talk to me about that. I don't even know if I have a question mm. for you. I just want to know where you land and where you yeah. have landed because I'm sure you've wrestled on both yeah. sides of things. Yeah. I love that you've brought this up because this is um, actually something I've given so much thought to in the last year. Um, interestingly enough, God has not let me pray for a miracle for myself. Hmm. But like, I've not been free to do that. For some reason, there is such a huge restraint. But I will tell you what, it means so much to me when other people do. Because I'm not dead yet. (laughs) You know, like I'm, I'm going to live fully until the last day or as, as long as much as I can, I'm going to live. And so I love when people aren't like, oh, terminal diagnosis, peace out. It's like, They long, right? right? They long for healing. And I love that. Like if somebody has pneumonia or they have COVID, we're praying for their healing. So of course, this is a natural response. What I found for myself is God, give me more time because I do sense that he has a little bit more work for me to do. Mm. Um, And I've prayed that when it is time for my body to decline, that I would be at peace with the fact that I've done what he's wanted me to do. Mm. Um, so all that to say, I have, I've definitely spent a lot of time this last year thinking about this because of people's different responses. And some people who have just claimed in Jesus name, you're healed, the cancer's gone. And right. I'm like, but it's not, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. actually not. <laughs> you just laid your hand on me, but that it's, that feels a little arrogant to me. 100%. It's like, how do you, you right? can't formulate a, a move of God, you know? No, no. And, Who uh, knows the will? It just yes. gets so goofy, doesn't it? It, it really, so really goofy. does. And it I've really seen does. God heal people, really does. right? I've seen it. Totally. So I believe it. I yes. know it. But it yeah. just gets so goofy and you want to be like, listen, don't. I, mm. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I know. God gives grace in that moment. But those are the times where I'm like, oh, my goodness. I just want to sit down and share with them yeah. how beautiful it is to not be God. You know, like, yeah. just let God be God. But I wow. love that people pray. Wow. And I um, I think the, the tension is what Paul wrote about, right? To, yeah. to stay here is good for those we get to love and care for. It's, <sighs> to stay here means more fruitful work. But to go is far better. Wow. Um, wow. And right now, I can't even say, to be real honest, I, I don't want to go because I have a son mm-hmm. and a husband. Yeah. And my son is just turning 11. Yeah. And when my suffering is over, their suffering gets worse. And so yeah. does, I have a huge family and I have some really, really close, close, precious best friends mm. um, that are, grie- they're all grieving big yeah. and they're amazing and they're walking this beautifully and they have faith. But um, I'd love to be around so that I don't cause more pain, you yeah. know? Um and so that's when I cry out to God, like, would you just give me more time? Can I see my t- son turn 13? It would be a miracle. Um, but last year at this time, the cancer was so fast. I didn't, I, I was like, God, would you let me see Jeremy turn 11? And he's turning 11 in two weeks. Wow. It's just so already miracles have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is, I don't know that I'm really answering it well, but I think it's that it's a tension. It's the, mis- again, the mystery yeah. of, um, you know, living with yeah. open hands, not doing this, yeah. um, but also fighting for not, I'm not here to fight cancer. I want to fight for more time because it's fruitful work to be here. Yeah. yeah. 
when God ends up taking me, it will mean that fruitful work is his to do something with. You know, if he wants to continue to do something with the words I've written or any of that, that's up to him. Um, but I would love some more time to, mm. to love on people. Mm. That's, yeah. yeah. Wow. I don't know if that answered or if it, you... Uh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, it's, it was very beautifully put. Um, I mean, especially there, I, I, I hadn't really even... You, what you referenced there with Paul, to live is Christ, to die is gain, right? Like mm. to live here means what, what, what that means to live as Christ is, yeah. is fruitful labor on others' yeah. behalf, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's just yeah. even important for us to recognize that our job, yeah. our mission here on earth, yeah. right? We don't get yep. to determine how long we're enlisted in that. Yeah. But, but we yep. do We do know we have a mission here as believers yes. And for us to wake up every day yeah. on purpose, Ooh, I love that. not yes. knowing if this is our last day to be on purpose. But then totally. even what you said right there, where it's like, okay, when God takes me, it's even better, right? Praise God. Right, right. But, but what you said right there is, I pray that my, my, I would be ready. Like my, mm, yeah. I'd be at peace that I, had, that I've accomplished everything. Yeah. I mean, even Paul said that too, right? That I'm, I'm a drink offering already poured out. Yeah. Like yeah. you can, he said this at the end of his life and ministry and, and, and you can, you can hear from him this like, all right, it's, it's time. I, I have yeah. fulfilled everything that I was called to fulfill here. Yeah. I've done my mission. And now I get to stand in front of Jesus and hear him say, well done, good yes. and faithful servant. Yeah. And I, I honestly have regret. That's part of the mm. thing that can be hard and where I don't experience peace is like, oh, man, can I have a do-over in a, in a, a lot of different ways? And mm. I know God redeems that stuff. That's, That's right. part of being human. That's, That's right. not a condemning thing at all. That's and so right. I don't live there in that moment. But it does compel me hmm. to be increasingly faithful um, and then when I'm not faithful to go back to God and say, okay, help me, you yeah. know, again, because I, I am not naturally <laughs> wired to pour myself out for people. Mm. I'm wired for my comfort yeah. and to preserve self yeah. and all those, yeah. uh, you know, ugly things. That are part are. of <laughs> Right. Right. Part right. Of that's nature. just oh. natural. Yes. That's my, that's my instinct. Yeah. Um, so mm. it's, there's a lot in my head at times where I think about the end and think, oof, I wish I had more time mm. to, but, um, but knowing that God, you know, the blood of Jesus covers right. all, all the failings and all right. the missed opportunities. And that makes me so grateful all over again for mm. grace and for forgiveness <sighs> and for God lo looking at me through Jesus. Like, I don't have to worry yeah. about that stuff, yeah. but it does motivate me to like, let's keep growing, yeah. you know, like let's yeah, keep yeah. going because yeah. time is precious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I think that the weight of grace is directly correlated with the weight of guilt and weight of regret, yes. right? It's like, that's yes. how we experience yes. the grace of God in a way that changes us is if we, totally. if we're, we're all, we're all going to feel that sense of regret about certain things, about one thing yeah. or another, right? We're all going to, yep. and I believe we're all going to stand in front of Jesus one day and we're going to see him and we're probably going to feel a sense of like, <gasps> Oh my goodness. Yes. And then all of a sudden this like something, he's going to gesture, he's going to look at us or mm -hmm. something. And there's just going to be this grace that just permeates from him I to us. And it's just that. like, oh my gosh, this is what it means to be in the grace of God, right? Yes. It's going to be this it crazy yes. experience where we're like, wow, wow, so profoundly affected by that. And so totally, I love that. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, you, you brought it up. I'm curious how, and, and, and share to the degree that you feel comfortable, but how you guys are walking through this together, you know, with your mm -hmm. husband, with your son, Yeah. you know, that's a, yeah that's a heavy thing to yeah. walk through it, together. Um, yeah. Facing that reality every day. Yeah. It's where the rubber meets the road for me. I've told people I, um, I would go so fast if I were single, mm. like I, and I don't mean that that's, that it's easy for a single facing this, just me personally. Um, the decision would be so clear. I wouldn't be going through the, the awful treatments and trying to fight for more time. Mm. Um, and that sounds selfish too, because I, I do still believe there's work for me to do beyond my family for sure. Yeah. But I think it would just be easier to let go, um, because of the deepest attachments in my life mm -hmm. are, are Eddie and Jeremy. And so we, um, it's been a, 
it's been an ugly and messy year in some ways um, with grief that's just hard to make sense of and describe, um, especially for uh, my son. You know, I think as yeah. adults, we have a little bit more ability to process or have yeah. categories a, a little bit more um, than a yeah. kid. Well, at least so, the prefrontal cortex of our brain is formed. Yes, yes. <laughs> right? I love that you know at these things. There's yes, that. Yes. <laughs> there's that. Yeah, <laughs> and he's still developing. He is. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have this, you know, huge worldview, but yeah. um, that has done something to my mama's heart that mm. is indescribable. And um, there have been moments that are so, you know, painful with his grief that I'm awake most of the night just processing. Mm. Um, and wondering what his life is going to be like. And, you know, mm. I can go, I can go there and God doesn't want me to stay there, yeah. but I definitely can, can go there. And, um, I think, you know, from the outset, for, even from my first diagnosis, we were resolved to just be so honest with Jeremy. And yeah. so the blessing in that is that this has been a conversation for years and Jeremy has suffered so much physically that he has a paradigm for suffering, mm -hmm. which I think is such a gift for a 10 year old. Yeah. What a gift yeah, that this isn't sure. going to knock him upside the head at 20 years old yeah. or, you know, 30 years old. So, um, so we've talked honestly and, he, I said, you can tell me anything. You can say anything. You can, you know, whatever you need to do through this process. So he has, he's, he said it all. And he, um, we've wept together. We've, um, we've had moments that I could never hope to put into words, but, um, it feels like something insanely sacred to be able to talk to my son about eternal realities mm. and about God's goodness and suffering, not minimizing what he's feeling. We stay there. Right. I validate what he's feeling, all that. But then to be able to help him walk from grief back to hope yeah. and say, you can feel this way. It's legit. You might feel like this for a long time. Wow. This might not lift for a long time, but let's tell God about this right now so that he can start practicing that communication with God and being able to be real and raw with him. And what a gift as a mom to be able to do that while he's still young. I mean, if we had been living the dream, then or I should qualify the American dream, yeah. um, then maybe I could have seen Jeremy grow up and never gotten to have these conversations mm. and show him some eternal realities that are going to be felt into eternity. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know if he's going to follow Jesus, but I have had a real strong sense that Jesus is in this and he's got Jeremy right. and this is part right. of his story. So, um, and then my husband and I, it's, it's different. It's so interesting how different it is grieving with a child and grieving with a husband and so we can't honestly handle a lot. Like it's, it is too heavy um, for Eddie to talk about this stuff too long. Mm -hmm. So we just will kind of like dip in and talk about something and come right back out because it's too much yeah. and it, right. it's too heavy. So we'll address some things we got to, we have to address, yeah. but we're not going to camp out there because um, it's, it's just too much. Yeah. So sure. um it's different how we're all processing it, but yeah. Um, yeah. that grief, it's its unspeakable, but then Jesus is in it with us. Yeah. And there's something holy and sacred yeah. in those moments. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he will But there's no... Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, he will continue to be in it. Yeah. With you guys. Yeah. Yep. You know, with them. Yep. And I... Yeah. I, I, I just... Um, you know, Colin, I was going to share this with you after uh, we, we got off the recording, but I, I just feel prompted. Um, my late wife, she, uh, I've shared this on the podcast before, but she was going through a real intense wrestling with when, when we were having our son. So our, our son was 15 months yeah. old when she was killed. So she oh, only wow. was able to be his mom for 15 months, you know, care for him and, uh, aside from the nine months that she carried him. And, um, but wow. when she was pregnant with him, she was really wrestling through the story of Hannah 
and Samuel. Whoa. It's like it, she got wow. camped there in her quiet time. It's like providentially the Lord, she would just read through her Bible, right? There was oh no like, yep. I'm going to pick this out because it was just like in her normal Bible reading, she got camped there. And so as a part of the pe- a piece, like a staple piece for the nursery, she she made a sign that said for the rest of his days, he'll be given over to the Lord as a direct quote from the book of first Samuel. And, um, that's amazing. And I, I just, mm. I've seen it on, on this side of things. I know you have mm. too, but I have so many conversations where we, we see God's grace step in mm. to wherever we are in the story, mm. yeah. whether it's, you know, before death, after death, grieving it, miracles, mm. healing, he's there and he provides wow. the exact grace that hmm. is needed in those moments. And so I don't know if I'm telling you this because you need to hear it or because someone mm-hmm. who's listening to this needs to hear it. Wow. But I do know the Lord has your son and your husband. Mm. And I do know the Lord has Thank you. you. And I do know I the Lord that. has everybody who's listening to this right now. Um, and wow. I just have mm. that big of trust. That I, I probably didn't before mm. I walked through this. It was probably right. like I had totally. a little bit more of like, totally. I want my hands on you yeah, know, yeah, control yeah. and... <laughs> I can, I can fix yeah. this and I can do this. And yes. then like when you step into these kinds mm. of situations where you have no control. Totally. It yep. makes, it forces you to go, all right, Lord, I'm going to let you be on the throne here. Yes. I know. I need to hear that every day. Honestly, I have to remind myself of that, but I love that you just shared that mm. because it's a, it's a moment by moment thing. Like, remember, this is part of God's good story. Remember yeah. Jeremy needs this in order for him to live the life God wants him to live. Yeah. Okay. Remember. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I would love everyone to tell me that daily, you know, like just this, this reality that it's, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing to see on the other side of That's things. Right. That's what right. has been going on behind the scenes here that necessitates this kind of story. Mm. Like, it's that idea that C.S. Lewis writes about heaven works backwards. Whew. Like when we get there, we're going to say it was heaven all along. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. Like it was heaven all along. We just couldn't see it because it was so hard. Wow. Um, That's so good. Wow. I wonder if the last couple minutes you can share with us, you know, I'd be remiss not to ask you about this because of the perspective, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you wrestling through this diagnosis provides you, I, I want you to look back on, the years of wrestling through anxiety and depression. And we have so many mm. listeners who that's, that's their story. They're wrestling through it. And yes. unfortunately the church has not done a really good job of entering into that conversation no. at all. And I'm sure yeah. you yeah. feel that more than most. Yeah. And we tend to whitewash it or we tend to kind of dismiss it or we kind of yes. die, we treat it. The prognosis is prayer. That's it. Right. Totally. That's, that's your <laughs> right. prescription. <laughs> You got to pray worry. this thing away, yeah. right? And it's going to, and you must not be close enough yep. to God because you're suffering with totally. this. Totally. Talk to me. If you're sitting across mm. the table from somebody and they're wrestling with mm. this anxiety and depression, what, what would you say yeah. to them? I mean, the first thing, this is so strange. This is the first thing that comes to mind is you are normal and there's nothing wrong with you mm. and nothing weird about you because, so good. and yes, there might be something wrong with the brain that we right. need to, to deal with, but, um, that, that haunting thought. And, you know, I wrestled, um, for years at a time where there were not abundant resources and where there was still a stigma about getting help. Mm. Um, so I, I look back and I think, oh, if I'd only known to get help, you know, right away and to seek out those resources. And I have been, my story is, um, a long and slow one in that, in these areas, but I would encourage them to, um, to, yeah, seek out people who will be able to speak into it with wisdom and expertise and, um, tenderness and to be able to, um, choose friends if possible. You know, we don't always get to do this, but choose friends who will be, um, ones who will remind you of who you are in the throes of these places that are so dark and disorienting. Yeah. Um, and to, um, you know, one thing that helped me, so there are so many things that have helped me. It's been such a long journey, but one thing has been to say, okay, here you are again, anxiety. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I recognize you. Here we are. And it's okay. Oh. 
Like, and not to be so scared of it, you know, yeah. go, oh my gosh, it's back. And, or the yeah. waves of depression that when I, I feel the onset of those to be like, okay, here we are yeah. again. Yeah. Like this is, this is a gift in like a sense that, yeah, I, yes. I, and okay, showed up again. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. You're back. Mm. And, um, the cool thing is, um, the long view is so precious because, um, I, I don't live there anymore. I visit there. Mm. And so God yeah. has changed my address in that sense. Yeah. Um, because he has been faithful over time, it will all, these things will always be part of me. Yeah. But that I think is hopeful too, for someone like it does, it won't always be this intense. Mm. It will come differently. It might, the waves might be different. The situation might be different, but this moment in time is not forever. Yeah. Um, and as you seek out resources, as you surround yourself with people who are going to to be with you and be happy to be with you right. in this, um, you're going to be strengthened. This is going to become a gift. This yeah. is going to become an entrance into a lot of people's realities. This is going to become a way into more of Christ. Um, to, so to see it not as the enemy or as some serious malfunction hmm. or something drastically wrong with me, hmm. but to just invite it in as, I don't know if I should say invite it in, but to accept it. Yeah, that's good. Amy yeah. Carmichael said, yeah. in acceptance lieth perfect peace to Ooh. say, okay, wow. this is this is part of how I'm wired. Yeah. And the strength of who God's made me is beautiful. And it has to come with some weaknesses and some propensities right. to things that are going to be really hard. And they're going to keep me humble before God yeah. because I'll be able to see, Ooh, look at the gifts you've given me to use, but I'm going to be able to see my weakness and frailty and be dependent on him. That's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. So it's, it keeps it from becoming the enemy into something that, okay, this is part of the whole picture of my personality and my giftings and yeah. my calling you know, yeah. if you want to put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. So, wow. Those are a few so things. Good. It's so good. Yeah. No, I think it is. I mean, just to, <clears throat> I mean, anxiety, depression, suffering in general, they're all, they're all, God wants to use them as invitations. They are all evidence yes. of a fallen and broken world that we live in. I love and that. out of the redemptive plan of God, he goes, okay, I'm going to take these things that mm. have, have crept into the, the fabric of my creation that was intended Ooh, to be yes. perfect, right? But it's now fractured yep. because of yes. sin. And now we live in the fallout yes. of that. I'm going to take these things and mm. out of this redemptive plan, I'm going to use these as these invitations. I love that. To this, this restorative uh, this restorative thing that I'm doing, not only yeah. in you, but across the, like all throughout history. Wow. And yes. And that's, and, and yep. that's the point of all of this, right? For, yeah. for us, it's why we're doing this podcast. That's why Colleen and I have this conversation is because we yeah. want you to recognize those invitations that God is extending you yes. and, and go have those real and honest and raw conversations yep. with, with him. And, and bring your pain to him, bring your disappointment to him. Yep. He can handle it, as Colleen said. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, that's, I, I know that your words, Colleen, in this time has really ministered to so many, it's ministered to me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm dumbfounded that we have been able to have this conversation. I'm just oh. really, it, it means mm -hmm. a lot to me. Um, mm -hmm. Colleen's just released, or I'm sorry, she's about to release a book mm -hmm. uh, here coming up here in the near future. Um that is called Hands of a Fiercely Tender God, which I love that title. My goodness, mm. I love that title. Um, and it's 31 Days of Hope, Honesty, and Encouragement for the Sufferer. It releases in October. Mm. And so we want to make sure that we'll put, we'll put some you know, information about that on the show notes of, this, of this, uh, this conversation, this podcast episode. But Colleen, I wonder if, you know, as we're kind of signing off, if you would... Um, would you just, is there something else that you feel like, man, this is really sitting on me. I want to share this with our mm -hmm. audience. Uh, I just I want to give you some hope and encouragement. I want to challenge you. What, what would you say as, as we're signing off? Oh, I love that. And there's something immediately because I've been um, just steeping in the book of Jude. Hmm. And that's so timely, just the descriptions yeah. of, of how people will act and um, what we, we might face. Yeah. as believers. And what I love, love, love is that Jude bookends this letter, short little letter that has a lot to do with 
how ugly things can get, right. how ugly right. people can act when they um, are against Christ. But mm. he says, you are kept and loved and called mm. at the beginning. And at the end, after these really depressing descriptions, <laughs> at the end, he says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Mm. And I've just been praying that over and over and over, like, God, let me keep myself in the love of God. Wow. Keep my son in the love of God. Keep my husband in the love of God. You know, wow. like, I've been praying it for others and challenging others to think this way right now. Um, and then after that, he calls us to mercy with fear. Hmm. And this idea that as we keep ourselves in the love of God, now we can have mercy on others, even while... We don't mess around with sin, you know, just yeah. this, wow. this beautiful idea of keeping the love of God because we're kept, we're loved, we're called. Wow. And now we can show mercy no matter where we're at. Um, when we're in the love of Christ, he flows out of us. Yeah, and yeah. so that that's a thought that's <sighs> been wow. singing in my heart lately. That's so good. That's so good. Colleen, thank you so much. Um, mm. Man. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for being real and vulnerable. And um, uh, we we don't we don't take that for granted. Um, mm. Just our time that we've been able to hear from you. And so um, I mean it. I'm so I'm I'm uh, just I'm in awe of what God's doing in you and what what He's mm. doing through you. And and well, um, thank you. This is yeah. I, the things you said. I just wanted to kind of sit and like dwell on the way you put things is so beautiful and you can tell you've walked with Jesus through suffering and your story is so compelling. Mm. Um, so the way you put things has really ministered to me today. I will mm. be chewing on some of that stuff for a while. <laughs> so thank <laughs> Praise you. Praise the Lord. Well, God refreshes those who refresh others. You definitely mm. refreshed us. So thank oh. you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, and, you. and, and I'm excited to see what God does in this conversation. Mm. Hey friend, if you liked this episode, be sure to like and subscribe so that you can stay in the loop every time Nothing Is Wasted releases a piece of content here on this YouTube channel.